welcome to K Swiss Radio and another episode of Inside K Swiss. You know the drill. We tell you week to week what we're up to, what's been going on at the brand, and anything interesting we think you should know about. And welcome to a new member of the team. I'm proud to introduce this week, Gabriella Gomez. Hi. Welcome to K Swiss. Thank you. I'm Gabby so is our here. new marketing director, freshly in the company for uh, approximately three days. Day three, just throwing right. me in. In it's at great. the deep end, straight on, <laughs> straight on to the podcast. Yeah. And uh, why don't you uh, give us a little bit of your background? Sure. Um, I cut my teeth at uh, Beats by Dre in marketing for years. They became my first client when I started my influencer agency. Um, and then I entered the footwear business with DC Shoes, really helped them pivot from core skate to lifestyle and more streetwear focused. Um, relaunched the women's line, which was super exciting for mm -hmm. me. Um, and most recently been in eSports. Interesting. So yeah. the um, you mentioned an influencer agency you had. Yes. Yes. So was that, that's a side hustle? That's my side hustle. Everybody's okay. got one, I feel like, these days, right? That's right. Yeah, I, am, yeah. I actually don't. I should have. I'm, I'm looking for one if anyone's got anything for me. <laughs> we can brainstorm some ideas, <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I go work at Whole Foods. That'll be my <laughs> side hustle. I've always wanted to work. No, Trader Joe's. I've oh, always wanted to yeah. work at Trader Joe's. One of the greeters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, That'll yeah. be my side hustle on the weekends. Um, so your influencer agency, is this something that you've done for, for many years? Yes, okay. definitely. And Since 2012. Okay. Really, yeah. And then what is the difference... Is there big differences between what influencers were then to how it is now? Oh, yeah. Back in those days, we were still trying to figure out if Instagram was going to stick. Right. Um, I was at Beats at the time, and uh, I was fighting with my boss daily about whether or not Instagram uh, celebrities, Instagram celebrities, yeah. were considered true celebrities, and brands should be. Playing Is this going to be a that? thing? And yeah. yeah, you obviously were saying. <laughs> yes, they definitely. Okay, should yeah. Be. Well, you were right. Yeah, which is why they called me back to be a consultant after. Oh, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, excellent. Yeah. There you go. So, so you out. left, and they're like, oh, "Actually, now we realize you were right. Can you come back we need and help all us?" All of your friends, all of your Rolodex. So, I love yeah, it. Yeah. And so now you're bringing that Rolodex to K-Swiss, which is yeah. a good win for us. Yeah. Um, then you were in the sneaker business and then um, you mentioned esports. And of course, esports is something that we've uh, jumped into and it's really sort of the Wild West um, it is. as an industry right now. And so yeah. what was your part of esports? Um, I was working on a data and analytics company and it was more on trying to get people like myself who doesn't, I didn't come from gaming, I rarely played video games growing up, I was trying to get consumers like myself to understand what was happening when they're watching the Twitch channels. Right. So it was an extension um, and I was getting everyone from celebrities to brands, um, partnerships going, so it was a fun uh, experience. Esports is wild. Yeah, I mean I think it's really interesting that if you're young gamers, because I have one who lives in my house, um, just inherently understand what's happening in a, in, right. a, in a video game or in, in, a, in a game, which is really chaotic, really fast, mm -hmm. they just get it. Whereas someone who doesn't, it's very difficult sometimes to really understand what's going on. And especially in competitive gaming, yep. to understand you know, the context of the game and who's winning and what's the objective. And so mm -hmm. I think it's really interesting that there's even companies bubbling up like like yours was where you're trying to provide data for the layman watcher on how do you provide statistics that a viewer right. can and can sort of understand what's happening and what i found fascinating was i was watching an esport tournament mm -hmm. and realized i was seeing data on the screen that the players themselves weren't seeing right all right, right, so yeah, fascinating. Yeah, and of course that's true in um, in any sport. The way that the absolutely. commentators are helping you through the absolutely the yeah. yellow first down line. Yeah, on it with football, it's the perfect you know through line between that and what the last company I was with was yeah. doing. Yeah, to explain it. Now esports is, um, I think it's still sort of un I think it's a given about the size of this thing, right? Based on viewership, I think how brands integrate into it or where the opportunities lie is definitely a bit more open. Absolutely. They're trying to test out different ways of doing it. Is it, are we going the traditional route of sponsorships? Is it a more authentic integration? What does that look like? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think there's an obvious play which is advertising against that audience, which is millions of eyeballs. So, but you could have big media dollars to do that. So most companies or companies like ours don't have huge million dollar media budgets. So. Sure. 
your um, you know we're not a Mastercard or a Pepsi where right. you can put in those uh, ad campaigns or you're really paying for eyeballs on your logo. Right. Um, so for us, it's like more of an in-depth mm -hmm. investment into making real products. This right. is the the one tap. Uh, gaming shoe. What's super cool about OneTap is that it was specifically made for esports, correct? That's right. It was yep. Specifically targeted towards that consumer. So it wasn't like you were taking a shoe that you had in line and just putting colorway on yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. It esports, which is what a lot of companies are doing right now. They're, yep. they're definitely getting some backlash for it too. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting to see where it'll end up. And everyone said, you know, what do you mean uh, you're doing a shoe for a gamer? They just like wearing slippers or right. slides. And we're like, all right. So when we cool. asked them, they said that. And so we have the, the collapsible <laughs> heel that makes it into a slide. That's So this is actually, yeah, was developed with the gamers themselves. And yeah. I think you'll hopefully you'll see us do a lot more with this as time goes on. And But I, I would expect there to be team deals, athlete endorsements, mm -hmm. you know, league sponsorships in the same way that basketball or soccer operates. I think that's okay. where this is going, but Absolutely. it's just so early. Um, it's a billion dollar industry yeah. for just the competitive side. Right. Um, and that's the current market, not the potential. Yeah. So we're going to yeah. see a huge upswing in esports. Yeah, for sure. So so now you find yourself here at Case. So it's back yes. in the sneaker game. Yes. And um, what do you foresee as your focus being as you get into this job? Increasing the brand visibility. Um, yep. There's some amazing things happening internally. Um, I mean, the the war room is set up yep. beautifully with all the different drops that are um, coming in the market. Yeah. It's, there's some great stuff. It's just let's ramp up the visibility and awareness and yeah. do it on a consistent basis. That's yeah, I think priority. it's, it's K-Swiss is one of those brands that resonates with people. You know, when you talk about K-Swiss, either you hear a lot, oh, I remember that, right. you know, right. I used to it's wear K-Swiss. Yeah, it's a sort of nostalgia. Sure. And, and, and nostalgia is great because it means you have history, which is really an asset in uh, brand building. But you don't want your brand to just be nostalgic. I want people to know about it today. You right. know? So I think the more we get you know, get the brand in front of people, their response is usually really positive. Mm -hmm. So it's just a question of getting more and more eyeballs. Sure. Um, and then, you know, you mentioned the war room where we have all these great product drops yeah. and, you know, it, the re there's a reason for that. So it does seem like fun that we're making all these brand collaborations, right. Ghostbusters or Gary V or, you know, but there's the a method to the madness, right? There is a method <laughs> to the madness. Yeah. And it's really that, you know, the consumer now is buying um, not necessarily in season. So in the old days, sure. uh, even probably when you were at DC, is there's spring, summer, mm -hmm. and fall, winter, and there's these sort of like fashion buying seasons. Right. And so you you kind of have two big drops a year, two big launch campaigns a year. Which is wild. So when I went into DC, that was one of the first things that I didn't come from footwear. I didn't have a background in fashion, per se. Yeah. Um, and that was one of the biggest things that I just kept pushing is, why are we only speaking to our consumer twice every year? Right, That's right. That's rethink this calendar. Yeah, and especially now when um, it's just 24 seven constantly on with the phones. So the consumer is actually buying all the time now and they're buying these special drops. So anything that's new, interesting, different, mm -hmm. small quantities of sort of sparking these buying moments. So we've really shifted from a seasonal consumer buying um, kind of rhythm to this culture of drops mm -hmm. and it's not a, it's not just sneakers i'm talking about even starbucks will have special drinks or yeah, right? remember the unicorn frappuccino yeah there yeah, you go so that's like just that. a if i see something that's interesting and it's 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 worth you know it's good for mm -hmm. the for the for the gram i'm going to go in and buy one and so i think the lesson in here is so whilst we do a lot of these small drop collaborations anyone who's followed k swiss is going to see that we've done a lot of these yes they're fun yes they bring new audiences but the, the, the method is of really us aligning how we roll product out based on how the consumer is buying. Mm -hmm. And instead of still sticking to this formulaic twice a year collection right. drop, just because that's what we've always done. Mm -hmm. I think the lesson in there is for other people who have brands and, or businesses is to uh, really understand how your consumer is buying when they're buying. And if that shifts and changes over time to change along with it. Absolutely. And I think That's we've I think we've done that crucial. successfully. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what's new at the brand this week. I think one of the things we've heard a lot of feedback on is when we drop the startup icon. So the okay. the first version of the 
case with startup. The response was great on these. This is the risk colorway. Um, it's just a sophisticated dress sneaker that's mm -hmm. great for the workplace. Um, really comfortable. It's direct to consumer only, so it's a killer price. Well, of course, they sold out right away, or most of the key sizes are gone. Mm -hmm. And everyone keeps asking us about a restock. So we are restocking the black colorway along with a couple of new colorways in the, at the first of the year. So this will be in January, summer in Q1 at least, but I think January we will be restocking the um, risk colorway of the um, Icon Startup along with a couple of really great new colors as well. So um, for people who've been asking, which we have more obviously, um, but they are coming back. And there's a couple of new drops as well of different styles coming in this side of Christmas. So we have one in actually in November, we have a new style coming that will be in a black and in a white. So there'll be some more stuff. But this particular one, yeah. January. Did you manage to snag any of those? I haven't yet, I'm going to. Okay, yeah. They may, actually maybe women's, there are some pairs left. So you might be, you might be lucky to get them Perfect. in your size. Um, we also teased the Breaking Bad shoe i think last week on the show i think next week we'll ask jeff nishimoto who's our collaborations guy to come on the show here i'm actually away next week i'm in china so we'll have jeff come in and talk about and and reveal more info on the breaking bad shoe there's some great stuff happening there did you see the seating kits that i did okay I'm so we'll show I'm, those we'll, are great yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll show those and we'll we'll do a little unboxing maybe on the show so we'll have jeff on next week to to sh to reveal the uh the breaking bad shoot the launch date on that is i believe october 17th uh for people who are interested um and i think that's it for for news for the week uh, let's move on to shout outs and to anything interesting that you that you've been what have you been listening to or anything particular? Yeah, I've I just re listened to Oprah's Super Soul Sunday with Brian Grazer, who's an amazing T V and film uh producer. He's done everything from Apollo thirteen to Beautiful Mind, like some really like classic yeah. uh, film. Well, and it's all about asking questions. Doesn't matter uh -huh. what the question is. If people have two minutes or 10 minutes or an hour to spend with you, you just ask questions. Right. Find out what their path looked like and how they went about getting to where they are. So yeah. he would ask everybody um, that he encountered throughout his his uh, career, even as an intern or a mailroom guy, he was asking the directors and the CEOs, how do they get where they are? Yeah, it's interesting that most people in companies are very open to mm -hmm. um, questions and to talking to people you know they're, yeah. they're actually dying to usually share <laughs> knowledge if but people sure. don't ask so um and i think through ceos where sneakers our other podcasts we do i've learned a lot about asking questions and doing doing more listening and less talking it's, it's a new thing for me anyone <laughs> <laughs> i think it's one of the most vital things that we can all learn is just yeah. how to listen appropriately and from a marketing perspective we're gaining knowledge on what that person as a consumer what are they looking for who, who are they about what yeah. do they value and we can tap into all those emotions yeah and um, really draw from it um a couple of things i wanted to point out i don't know if you've been following this uh you know we work and their ipo you know we work's definitely in our in our zone as a company that loves entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and i think we work is one of those power brands in entrepreneurship obviously yes. and their ipo has been fascinating to watch they were valued at 47 billion dollars mm -hmm. and now they're two people are talking about them going at, going bankrupt sure. in the space of a week it's absolutely fascinating story about how they prep themselves for an ipo and then once they revealed mm -hmm. their financials as part of that process um, it sort of uncovered some yeah. glaring questions about their financial viability. Would you say that that's a, a testament to their marketing? Is that that never came to light that they weren't as profitable as they seemed because they marketed so well and were yeah, so maybe. And I and I think also it's sort of part <laughs> of it bad. is this is this sort of. <laughs> You know, um, it was almost like around the the early two thousands with all the dot coms. You know, you get mm -hmm. swept up in this great momentum sure. of buying into these things, and you know, these founder founder led mm -hmm. uh, you know tech startups now are, are becoming a similar way whether it's uber or right. um, um or tesla or any of these you know your people are dying for one so they almost maybe you just sort of put more belief into them when you see them and this yeah. this one sort of got the snowball kept rolling and no one asked maybe the right questions but right. 
there is an article that I read. It's actually on the um, on New York Magazine's website. They have a section called Intellig in Intelligenza. And the article was called, uh, At What Point Does Malfeasance Become Fraud? Mm -hmm. And it was by New York University Business School professor Scott Galloway about the... Um, the IPO for WeWork is fascinating article, super juicy, uh, really amazing. So I'd read that actually a couple of days ago and I was like, anyone who's interested in business or entrepreneurship or the WeWork story, I recommend going and read that. It's really cool. Um, and the, Scott Galloway in general, his writing is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, this was this was great. It's more like an interview style yeah. and um, very clever, very clever take. And then the other thing is I just finished reading this book by about Elon Musk and so I apologize i don't have the cover because i always take the covers off i finished it on the train today hopefully you can see that um what's what's amazing about this and i don't know if you followed elon musk at all mm -hmm. yeah tesla Definitely. and spacex and oh, yeah. is um you know often we read books about really tactical advice lots of detailed you know there's a and there's a lot of material out there about how to do this and you know we focus on that sometimes it's really inspiring to listen and read about people who have just such a big vision of what they're trying to accomplish and setting the biggest goals for their companies. And I think that's what I took from this book about Elon Musk is here's a dude, whether you like him or you don't, and he is somewhat polarizing, um, his ability to see the big picture and to set a massive goal and then to, to take huge gambles and and risk in achieving it is just incredible and i i just read this book and was just blown away of like man i'm not doing anything compared to this guy <laughs> so i would again i would recommend reading if and it's, it's not even that new this book's not that new but um i recommend it to anyone who's like really wants some inspiration about what's possible in how you can um you know build a career or business or life i would i would say that's really good so awesome those are mine for the week cool. so with that Gabby, welcome to the Thank team. You. I apologize we threw you onto our podcast <laughs> with hardly any notice. Um, that was fun. We got, uh, I think we got a couple of shout outs too, all right. right? So like, shout out to Chase Jarvis, Tyler Babin, and Red Romina. Oh yeah, Babin. I know Babin. Yeah. It was the old Gary V team. He was one of the videographers. He's gone off on his own. Um, so hi Babin if you're watching. <laughs> Those guys all created content around our startup shoe, so we appreciate you for doing that. Um, yeah, and uh, the new startup with Andy Wynn we used uh, from, from Afters Ice Cream. He's our new entrepreneur that is the face of our new colorways and new launch of startup. Go check that out. Really good guy. Tons of engagement on that content. So good job to Santi and Mason and Omar on the marketing team for that. So with that, uh, we may have blabbed on a bit too long <laughs> this time, but thank you everyone for tuning in. This is Inside K-Swiss on Cases Radio, and we'll catch you on the next one.